All right, good morning. Um, welcome to Deep Dive on JSON and Python. I'm glad y'all came here today. And so let's go, go ahead and get started. Um, so quickly, what we're going to do is we'll cover, um, we'll cover the requirements of if, you're, if you plan on following along um, with the examples that I have. And then we'll also cover concepts in, in JSON and Python. And some of, some of those are just going to be overviews um, of that. And then we're actually going to get into requesting content and also parsing content as well, and then additional resources that you'll be able to um, follow after you're, uh, after you're done with this uh, training here. There we go. OK, so um, you definitely need a web browser for this. Um, I, prefer, I, I pre preferably um, use Chrome. And, um, but also, you'll need Python at least 3.5 or greater. Um, and you'll need an editor, some sort of IDE, um, to be able to edit your code. Um, and then uh, Git, Git is optional. You can, you can download the repo just directly from the website, or you can use Git clone to be able to copy the repo we'll be using today as well. Um, and then also Postman. Postman's optional, but we'll, I'll show some examples of just doing some basic requests and getting JSON back with that. Um, okay. And, here, and here's Postman. Postman's a really good tool if you want to um, test an API and uh, just in general. So if you want to query an API but you don't want to program it, you can put the URL, the parameters in, and then be able to query that way. And then here's the code. So to be able to do the code examples and follow along, you'll have to download them off of GitHub. You can do it from, um, by using git clone from the command line. Or you can also do that from, uh, you can just download the zip file from the GitHub as well, like I was mentioning earlier. And then just make sure you have the, the right website right there to be able to do that. And so, so some of the optional tools we, you, you could use, uh, we probably won't get into too much of this today, but um, JSON test and JSON lint and JSON placeholder, these are, these are good tools for testing your JSON and um, for formatting and um, correctness and things like that. So concepts. So Java, uh, JSON is Java, um, uh, JavaScript object no notation. And really what it is is just a bunch of uh, key value pairs um, to be able to define objects. And so um, a, lo a lot of object um, or a lot of NoSQL databases, uh, um, not all of them, but some of them are based on um, JSON as well. And so when you get request back, they will give you JSON, or they're even stored in JSON. Um, some even uh, flat file databases that will use JSON to be able to store data, and that's a good way to store data. Um, one of the reasons it's good at that is because it, um, from a programming concept, it uses hash tables, and hash tables is a, a good mapping to be able to access an, an, or, an unordered list of, be, of key pairs to be able to access data quickly. And so this example here, um, this is just a good example of a um, of an object for JSON. And so this is, this is me. This is uh, first name Jock, last name Reed. And uh, the key here is the, so your key value or your name value pair is going to be first name. And then the name is going to be the actual value. And then same thing with the last name as well. And that, and that defines who, more or less, who I am. And then if you have more than one of that, then you have, um, you're going to have a, you're typically going to have a list or you could also define it also within its own JSON if you had some other key value pairs. But um, you can define multiple objects within um, your JSON structure as well. So if you have multiple people, like in this case, myself and Matt Tenopoli, we can define them here as well. And so you, now you have an array, and you can iterate over that array and those objects. And so, and so here's a little bit more of a. Um, a, be a better example of some uh, of a of a, some key value pairs here for JSON, and typically how they would be defined. You you start with some um, upper um, upper JSON objects, and then you have nested JSON objects within some of the other JSON objects, and it allows you to define data deeper than just um, a basic key value pair. It also allows you to define other arrays and other objects within um, the JSON itself. So quick overview of Python. So um, one of the things about Python is um, indentation is very important. So if you're not used to using Python, 
this can be, it, it can start off being a little bit annoying, but um, it actually will help you write better code because one of the things you write, you can, in a lot of other languages, you can just mash a whole bunch of code together. This actually gets you to write it in a clear form to where you, uh, you can see it and read it and anyone can come in and basically read your code. I mean, you can write it in ways that are still a little bit unclear, but the indentation helps, you, helps make it more human readable. And, so, and that makes it easier for you to be able to use it and others to be able to use your code as well. And so that's real important to uh, make sure you get um, that part correct. And once you, once you learn to appreciate the indentation part of Python, you, you find it being better than most languages that you can use. Um, that being said, it has, a, it has the basic, uh, um, just of any programming language, has the basic same kind of thing. So you have um, different types of data. You have a variable assignment. You have arrays. Um, and then you have different statements. You can import your libraries. Um, the print statement is how you're echoing back to the, um, the, the terminal. Or, and then uh, you have conditional. So yeah, that's your, your if, else statements to be able to control flow of your data. And then, uh, and then looping. So you got your basic while loops, for loops, um, that kind of thing. So here's a little bit more um, in depth of some of the different types that we have. So you have your basic types, just like any other programming language. Um, ints, floats, complex numbers, so single digits, um, uh, fractions, that kind of thing. And then you have Boolean, so that's your true and false. Um, strings, this can be your immutable, uh, Im immutable strings. And so that's going to be um, based on either um, your one hash quotations or your two hash. Or if you're defining multiple lines, you can also um, do triple uh, quotations to be able to um, use for strings as well. Um, and then also you have sequences. So you have um, lists. And list is basically like a, um, for any other programming languages, that, that would be your arrays. So that's just going to be your basic. Um, you define one, I one item or object or variable or whatever. And then, it's, and then consecutively, you just put a comma and then put the next one and then put the next one after that. And that's going to be your um, but your basic array, and then you can iterate the um, same way. It's, it's going to be an ordered list, so it's going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to iterate through that list. And then you have tuples, which allows you to, it's heterogeneous, so you can put multiple um, types of data in there. You don't, you're not confined to just, um, uh, just, just using uh, strings and all your um, arrays or just uh, um, true, val or true value pairs in there. You can basically say, um, I can have a true value pair on one, one item of the list, and then I can have a string on the next, and then I can have an int on the next one, and you can keep going. And that's what a tuple allows, a tup or a tuple. Some people call it tuple. Um, it allows you to be able to define multiple um, objects inside the um, list there. And then you have mapping, so like dictionaries. And that's um, one, of the things, one of the strengths of Python with JSON is that once you get the JSON in, it's basically, as far as Python's concerned, once you've you, you convert that over to a dictionary, and it's just like accessing any dictionary at that point. And so it's really fast, because it's, it's Python's version of the hash tables I was mentioning later. And so you have that mapping, and it allows for very quick access of the data, because the data is already mapped over. You already know where it is. What's the first name of uh, the zero one of that list I was showing you before, which I can go up? So if you're going through the list and you go, OK, and list, what's the first name of that guy? Well, it's already mapped over. All you have to type in is first name, and then you get its jock. And so that makes it quick, as opposed to if it was just a list within a list, you would have to know where in that ordered list my name is, and that makes it more complicated. So hash tables are very good for processing data. And here's some examples of some of the um, data types I was talking about. So you have your. Um, numeric ones, and you get your booleans, and there's your strings. Um, and, it, and this will be your import statements right here, and your variable assignments as well. So you can assign um, any kind of variable to a string, or an int, or boolean, or whatever. Um, and then your, so and in the, some of the method of invocation and looping, you get your for loops. Um, and then you also have while loops. So while loops will be anything like while true do these actions, that kind of thing. Um, and then you also have a method chaining. So you can, um, you can put together multiple. So when you're defining, like when you're using certain objects, um, if, if, it, if it's defined as a more than just one type of object, you can, call, you can call it in one string, which you would see right here on the content. 
So instead of doing this in two different, you can just do it right here. And that makes it easier in Python to do that. And then you have your array indexes, which is basically your list. And this is how this is your first array. And then how you get that first one is you call one, which is going to be second element right there, because it goes 0, 1, 2. Um, then you have multi-dimensional arrays, so buildings arrays, and then that's building floor, that kind of thing. Um, and then compound statements, where you're nesting if, if conditionals within for loops, or for loops within if conditionals, or vice versa, things like that. All right, so requesting content. So any kind of a, so it's whatever you want is whatever you get. So whatever you're trying to request, so like in JSON, like if you're, you're using an API, you're going to request that content, and it's going to give you back something at that point, too. Um, and to do that, you're going to be able to, you're going to be using the URL. You might have to define the parameters based on URL queries, depending on the API that you're using. Um, or you might have to actually post information in there first and give it. And you might also have to um, um, provide authorization and, and things like that in there as well. Um, let's see here. So uh, yeah, and then the, the response is whatever you get back. So typically, a lot of responses you're going to get um, XML or JSON and most modern web examples um, when you get your data back. So and today, we're going to be covering more um, the, of the JSON than anything else. OK, so requesting content via Postman. So we'll do an example of this right now. And we'll use this, uh, this URL link here. And we're going to use Postman. And we'll show you kind of what that looks like um, when we do that. And, so, and, we'll, and we'll look at the example of what we get back. So so this is that, that same URL I, I have here, which is the JSON placeholder typecode.com.users. So I've already requested it before, but I can do it again. You'll see it come back. So when it comes back, it gives us, it start, It actually, the JSON response it gives us back at first, it gives us an ordered list in there. So you get a first item. And the first item is then defined um, with, a, with an object um, nested inside of that. And so you have the um, ID, and you have um, the name, the username. And then, with, and then you get inside the address portion, and you have another nested object within, within inside the address as well. Another key, and you have multiple key value pairs within that. So to break it down a little bit closer, you can see. So you're, we're just understanding the, um, the structure here. And so if you crush it down a little bit smaller, you can, you can see it like that right there. And so. You start off with the array, then you have each individual object. And so, and it's defined by each, uh, and each object has its own ID and value pair. Actually, so the next part of it will, um, what we're going to do is we're going to base this off the, um, oh, sorry. Um, so the coding example I gave from GitHub, we're going we're gonna to download that. And we're going to use uh, the Python coding examples to be able to parse some JSON. So kind of like when I showed you the Postman request, um, this is great. This example right here, this is great when you get this back. But um, this is where we're going to use the power of Python to be able to process that information out. Because it's great that you get that, but now what do you do with it? Well, maybe all you need out of there is you just need the name and the phone number of the person that you're looking for. And so we can use Python to parse that out quickly and give us the responses we're looking for. So here we would, get, we would, we would go to GitHub and we, get this, uh, we would get this library here. Um, you can down, like I said, you can download just as a zip. If you follow this link right here, this will allow you to just get the zip folder, and you'll download that, and then you'll have uh, all the Python um, examples in there that we'll be using today. Or you can use the Git clone, which are the Git, home, Git, Git clone examples right here, if you're, from, if you're more familiar with Git. And so let's see. Uh, 
Xamarin. So right now we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and run one of the examples it's talking about here. So depending on which version of Python you have installed, we want we're right here we're using Python three. So make sure you're doing that. Um, if that's the only version of Python you have on Windows, it'll probably just be Python. But you can check your example. If not, it might it might be Python three if you have more than one version of Python, or if you're on Mac, Mac will automatically define it as Python three. So we're gonna we're gonna when when we're inside that folder, we're actually gonna be we're actually gonna run this command right here. So we're gonna run that from command line directly. So right here, uh, I've, and I've already gone to that file here. Here's where it's located for me. This is where I. Um, I, had the, I downloaded the file to my, my download section, then I unzipped it, and then I went to coding 202 parsing JSON, uh, just like the instructions. So, yeah, you, you're, you're, and then we're going um, to you navigate to that section in your terminal, and then we'll run the code from there. Don't do it. And so as you can see here, you'll get the, when you get the response back, it's going to print out the JSON to your, um, um, to, to your console right there. So that way you can see what you got. So it, it, makes the, it makes the URL request to the API. And then when it gives it the, it's giving it the correct parameters and everything. And then it's going to get the um, data back from the API itself. And this is the response we got back from that. So, and let's take a look at that file too. See which one was. Get team uh, Let's see here. And actually, the code for this is uh, is pretty simple. So, um, for the for the purposes of this, um, I used uh, the URL lib instead of a uh, request. So, typically in Python, just one of the things I want like to point out is a lot of people use the request library. Yes. I can't hear. Larger? Oh, OK. Um, yeah, hang, hang on just one second. Sorry about that. There we go. Awesome. Thank you. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. So, um, so yeah. So th it's not a lot of code to be able to do this. It's 15 lines of code. But um, so anyway. So yeah. The what I was saying before is uh, from here we're using the to, we're importing the request library from the URL lib. But um, my recommendation is to use the re in general is to use the request library from Python, and you can do that from um, you can download that additional library, and that's usually the most popular library to do requests in. Uh, just for the sake of this. Um, class here, though we're using URL lib, so you don't have to download any additional um, Python libraries because this is based. This is a um, built-in library right here. Uh, but anyway, so you so you would go using those import statements that we used before. So you'd say from the URL lib dot request library, import request, import URL open, and then you import the JSON. And then this is where you define your request. So when you find your request, you're going to give it the um, URL of the API we're trying to hit here, and then um, and then we're going to tell it to you, Add these headers in for the request. So this is your authorization, right there. And then this is going to be your add header. And so, in this case, we're telling it we want JSON back. So, um, or we're telling it to accept the JSON response. And this will, depending on the API you're using, this might be important because this might define how you get the information back. Some, uh, if it's a, a API that can use more than one, it might default to XML or it might default to JSON. But um, it's good to define that in the headers as well. Um, so then you're going to use the response to do the URL open. That's going to open your request, and then you're going to um, the response string is you're going to you're going to read and decode the information you're getting back from the response string. So UTF-8, the uh, Unicode Unicode 8 is what um, Python 3 uses to define strings, and so that, so you have to decode that um, in there because that may not be what you might be getting ASCII or something else back from the response. So you need to make sure to decode that correctly. 
and then the JSON object. So this is where we use the JSON library, and the JSON library will, um, we're going to define that as basically making that into our dictionary or our key value pair. And that's where you put the JSON that loads into the response string. And then where we saw that big printout when it came up on the terminal, that's where um, we did the print statement, print, open parentheses, and then the whole JSON. To, and, a, and this converts the JSON object back into a string. So to print it out correctly, you need to make sure you're printing it as a string. And so that puts that back into there. And then it closes the response up. So this closes the URL response, and then you, you're done with your program right there. So, and just a few lines of code, you're able to do that. So with requests, if you're using the request library, it'd be, uh, you do, use even less code to be able to do the same thing. But like I said, we're doing this so you don't have to do any additional libraries. Um, so, and then, and then again, what, um, looking at the structure of the JSON itself, um, the first thing you get back, you have an object, um, you, you get your first object back, and that's the uh, initial um, object you have, and then you have it defined by maps. And then within that, you have another nested JSON object inside of that, and then you have arrays. And so one, once, you, once you know the base structure of whatever it is you're requesting, you can then, that's when you're able to then start parsing off data to say, I only want this data, I only want that data. Which leads right into our person content. Um, so methods of parsing. So in some cases, depending on what you're doing with the data, you maybe you don't need to parse it. Maybe it's human readable enough. Maybe the response is small. Um, maybe you're using it in its current form. I don't know. I mean, every use case is a little bit different. We don't want to restrict people to you always have to parse the data because you may not always have to parse the JSON data. Um, and so it may be just human readable enough and it's small enough, it's not a large amount of data you're getting back and then you can just, it's sufficient for your needs. Um, and then do it yourself. The, the doing it yourself allows you to, I, you, could, you could go in and do some regex and parse the string that way, some kind of old ways of doing it, but that's it's not really efficient, but you can do it. Um, you can build or, or, or use a framework and so, um, and, and there's a lot of uh, libraries that uh, are allow you to be able to do that as well. And so, um, and then you can, and you can see some of those libraries here at, at JSON. So, but, th but there's a lot of ready-made libraries, and Python already has a, um, a very good JSON library to allow you to parse it out. So on the parsing, parsing instruction. So the first thing you got to understand is the, the content. And this is important because you got to know what you're getting back. If you don't know what you're getting back, then you can't actually parse it. And so a lot of APIs come with um, schema, so that way when you know where you get your response back, you know what, your, um, you know what to expect when you get your response. Because if you don't know what to expect, if it was going to be different every time, then you could never par actually parse the data. I mean, that makes sense, but um, that's one of the things you got to um, pay attention to. So, and, and what does that data represent? Um, is it, um, is it re representing your data sample? Is it representing um, phone, in phone book information or something like that, or contact information, or books or logs, or maybe it's information about access points. Maybe you're using uh, APIC-EM um, programmability to be able to get data back and it's giving you data. You need to understand what you're seeing when you're looking at that and how that impacts your network. Um, and so depending on that, you need to define what you need, which will be maybe in names or email addresses or X and Y coordinates of its uh, um, data on a map, patient IDs, things like that. Um, and how much of it do you need? Well, um, I mean, that, a lot of that can depend on what your, your use case is on that one, too, as well. So, oh, uh, yeah. And then, uh, so be or well, there's, there's, there's more than one path to get to the, get to the content. So, and this is kind of what we are talking about before. JSON, uh, there's a good, so the built-in library for JSON, I primarily just use that for JSON and Python. But there are also some really other good external libraries. And kind of the same thing I was talking about here. So we use URL lib um, for our request, but um, there's URL lib, URL lib two, URL lib two is built in as well. But there's also the request library, and this is by far the most um, popular library, third-party library for Python. So I always recommend people um, go with that because 
once you start getting into more complicated examples of doing API requests, requests is going to be a lot more, um, it's going it's to be better, it's going to be easier to use, and it's going to be quicker to use as well. Because even if you know how to use URLib and URLib2 efficiently, you're probably going to do better with requests. So now we're going to work on parsing and extract the data. So this is where we're going to um, take another. So that same code file that we downloaded, um, we're going to take an example from that. And we're going to use the activity parse1.py. So in here, we'll, we'll look at the code and uh, um, see what we need to do. So we need to access uh, an array via an index name and output via print. And so yeah, we're gonna, right here, we're going to get the location of uh, Ch Ch Chelsea Dietrich. So. Activity first one. Okay. Can y'all can y'all read that all right? Yeah. Good. Okay. Um, and just really quickly, I'll I'll run the uh, I'll run the script before and just kind of see it, show you what we get back at first. So that way we can see before before we parse it what, what it is. Python 3. So here's what you would get back before you would parse it. So <laughs> this is where, and this is why we're going to parse some of this data out right here. Um, OK. Okay. So some of these we already have um, kind of predefined here, but let's uh, let's try to go through some of this right here. So some of it we have commented out. If we um, at first we have it printed out, it just prints the basic object. So. Okay. Uh, hold on one second. Just sorry about that. Um. Okay. But yeah, so. Depending, uh, depending on what you want to call here, is this will define some of the objects that we're looking for. And so, um, <coughs> sorry. Um, but basically, what this will do is this will, uh, um, depending on the um, what we're what we're defining, what we want to call from the from the uh, JSON response we get back, we're going to get a um, a response based on that as well. And so, now that I've changed my code. Um, we can go back and we can run it again and see what our response is going to be. So I'll run their same response again. And then you got Chelsea Dietrich. So um, that's part of that right there. And that gives us the name variable pair. But now we need to know where she is. So that's when we use these other statements. And so based off the JSON schema itself, we'll know that we also need um, her address and her location. And then specifically within that location, it'll give us latitude and longitude. And so we'll know exactly where that is. But once you start changing the code, make sure you save it. 
before you run it again, and then we can. So now we have, uh, and now we have it where we have it. Oh. Okay. Okay. So now you can see it a little bit better. Sorry about that. Um, anyway, so so basically, what you have right here, we have a we printed out Chelsea Dietrich. We then have we then have our location printed out. So we have her latitude and her longitude, and so that way we can find her exactly where she's located. And then when I come on it, the other uh, the other print statements that allowed us to be able to break off some of those print statements specifically. So if we review the code again, if you look at what we're doing for the key value pair, so, so Chelsea Giedrich is located on um, item four of that array. But then we pull her name, so we go name. So that's how we define who's there. And then we're also able to see who, where, um, by, by giving it the right um, key, so we give it the right key, so we define address, and then um, also nest into that geo we can then find out exactly where her location is based off of that. And depending on what we want specifically from that data, all we got to do is give it, the right, uh, give it the right nested key, and it'll give us the continual information. So uh, like in this example on line 17, we just want her, if we just want her longitude, her exact longitude for some reason, if that's all you want, all you got to do is you've already defined where, so She's, number, she's object four, and then she's at address, geo, longitude. And so we, we define that all the way out. And you can do that with any response. So if it's a, if it's a um, APIC EM and you're defining networks, you may have to define, uh, you, you would give it the key value pair that would give you the right um, value for maybe the router or the switch that's on your, um, your example that you're pulling from that request. Okay, so then we'll we'll do another example with uh, activity parse two. So let's find that response right here. And so this is already kind of pre-ready for um, us to use here. So if we if we printed it the exact same way we did before, it'll it'll come up with a large response, um, just like we did with the other one. Um, we can go ahead and comment that out because we kind of know that's gonna um, that already happened there. But here is where we can use some of the more of the features from Python to be able to help us parse some of that data out. OK, so if we look at the code here, so what we're doing is we're saying uh, right here we're going to um, we want to see all the campuses from the objects that are initially defined from this particular um, API request. And so when we go in and we use this API request from, and, th and this is from, uh, uh, this is a CMX, so a mobility one. So this is uh, based on maps and locations of um, devices, sometimes even people. Um, and you can use this at devnetapi.cisco.com. Um, but so, get, so basically when you come down here, so we're saying the JSON object, we, we know what the JSON object is because we've defined that from our request up here. And then we say, I just want the campuses. So after you do that, you know that there's multiple campuses. So for every campus in campuses, we're going to print the name of that campus. So that's, a, that's your first loop. And it'll loop through every iteration of campuses until it gets through that. And the next thing it'll do, we'll say um, every building in that campus. And then we'll go through and do the same thing for every building in campus building list, which is a nested object with inside campuses itself, it's also going to print out every building. So it's going to go campus, and it's going to go building, 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 and then campus, building, 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 building. So if we run this, we should be able to see that. And, it, and it'll print that out right here. Yeah, let's make sure I saved it, though. And there you go. So Cisco Live Latin America um, was the campus. And then Moon Palace Expo 
Um, the next one is an unassigned campus, then you get the DevNet campus, DevNet building, Cisco campus, building nine. And so um, basically we're, we're, um, we've printed only the information we're done, and so that's kind of how we parse the data. And so those key value pairs is what's really essential to being able to get there, is you have to understand the data. So um, when, you're, when you're studying an API, um, it doesn't matter what API it is, and it could be Cisco APIs. Like in this example, we're using Cisco APIs. But um, whatever it APIs, you have to know what's, what you're going to get response back. So then when you know, you know exactly what to put in there. And then you can either loop through that data, uh, or you can save that data in your own database, depending on what you need. And you can add that, and you can, and you can do all sorts of things with that at that point. So let's see, where's the next part? I think we have time to do the next two. So we'll, we'll do the next two activities just so there's examples on how to do this some more. There are three. And this is another example of that as well. So, um, and this is specific. So now we're defining it from the DevNet campus. If you look at the URL, DevNet campus, DevNet building. Um, and so we should get some response back. And I'll run, it in, I'll run this one initially as well. So you get your, your big mass amount of data back. And then we'll go through, and then we'll correct that out. No, sorry. And so in Python, you, you comment out using, um, you can use hashtags or pound signs, I mean, or you can, uh, Or you can use a, or, or you can use quotations to comment stuff out as too as well. Okay, so now that we've changed our code, we're going to walk through this a little bit more. So in the same way, we've um, after we've got our response back from we we loaded that into the JSON load, so now it's our dictionary, and then we come through. Um, and we said, OK, we want to know the floor list. And so JSON object floor list. So the floors variable has our floor list defined in that as well. And so that's also going to be um, a dictionary format in there. And so through each floor, we're going to go through and we're going to print the floor name, the floor number, um, and then the string from the floor number as well. And so and then we're going to do the same thing for every floor. We're going to do access points. And so for every access point, we'll print every, uh, every one of those access points out as well. And so if everything works right, we should, uh, it'll print out exactly where all these access points are. So now that we save that, we'll go ahead and run our code again. And there you go. It's DevNet floor number one. That's the low, and that's the uh, um, MAC address of all of our access points and which floor and section they're located in. And we've de and because since we've defined that through our uh, um, through our program here or through the the Python program that we wrote, um, like I said again, we get back the data that we request. Okay, so we'll run through one more example real quick. Do the same thing. Okay, so this one's a little bit more complicated than the last one. Okay. So in this one, we're going we're gonna to review it. So, and we're going to look at how we're storing the relevant information in the Python arrays. And then we're going to query each source from that. So here we're, we're putting in common functionality for our get content. So here's where we put in. So you can define functions in, in Python just like any object-oriented um, language. And when you define those functions, we're giving it a set of things to do. So what, we're gonna, so what we do here is when we define this function for get content, this will allow us to just uh, reuse this same get content function over and over um, for different requests that we may need later. And so then when we do that, and we also define the string up here for the um, API that we're going to use. And then here's the same JSON object we saw before, and we load that from the request information. And so, but here, we, but instead of using it the way we did before, we're using just the get content function that we created up here. And this can't get content function passes in all the same things as it did before, but like I said, it can be reused this time. 
Um, so inside buildings, we um, in this list right here that we've defined, we've defined this as a list. We're going to then populate that list with the JSON objects building list. And then after that, we're going to iterate through those, uh, through those buildings, um, the building names, and append a building name back into the building names list. So basically, once we, de so once we, define, we, we define the building names variable for the list, and then we define the variable for the JSON objects for list, and then we're going to go through every building, and then we're going to populate our own list or array through that, and then we're going to print those out. So let's, uh, let's, uh, let's see. So we'll, we'll run this real quick, and then we'll edit the code a little bit more to show some functionality. There we go. So now we'll come back through here. We'll do the same thing. We're going to do that same building names list where they're going to, we're then going to um, edit the information even further. And put it with the, and create an uh, another URI for the uh, um, for the request here. So basically, what we do is we um, we get the building name, and this will allow us to create a new URI here, um, and we will define that through the uh, um, through this variable here. So for, it'll loop through every every name, and it'll go building URI, and then it'll say URI CMX, which uses this as the base URI. And then it parses that with the building name. And so when it does that, it, it's going to print us off the building name, but it's also going to do something even cooler. It's then going to use that new parse. So we took the information from the JSON, from the API. We're going to put a new, a new structure on that and then we're, for, the, for the actual API URL. And then we're going to use that new string to then call a, a different API call and get new data back. And so we're actually using the API to manipulate the use of the API itself at this point. And so, and, uh, and that's easy. And, and here's the deal. I was like, this is, like I said, this is a good thing about Python is this beautiful code. You can do this and this is 30 lines of code. This wouldn't take you very long to do this kind of project. And once you do more of these things, you get, you get used to it and it gets better. So we're going to save this. And we're going to run it now this time, see what we'll get. And there you go. And you, so we did that to get our new, our, our, so we, got the, we still got the same last request back if you look at the, um, the data here. Um, but then we created that new, that, new, that new URL, and then we used that same new URL to then get more data back. And, so, and you can do this over and over. And so if, um, you can use the actual, um, you can use Parson, or, uh, JSON or Python to parse the JSON and then use that from the API request to then query further API requests from the API you're using. And it all depends on the API you're using. Um, but in this case, it works quite well. And it works quite well in most cases. Um, so that being said, here's some additional resources I recommend. Oh, sorry. Um, Learning Labs over here, the, and you can visit some of them here over, over here in the DevNet zone. Is that's a great place to go. They have a lot of coding 101, um, 202s, things like this is a 202 training. But um, that's a great place to go. Um, they're available. And these are um, great resources for that. Python.org for the Python language itself. Um, Python documentation. You got docs.python. Um, other things that were, I would recommend if you're, if you're getting started with Python, um, and these are just personal. These are not endorsed by Cisco at all. But like, uh, Learn Python the Hard Way is a great book. It, one of the things it forces you to do is it forces you to use the tools over and over and over and over again. And so that seems like, well, why would you need that repetitive nature? It's not very creative if you think about it. But what that does is it kind of forces you to use the language enough to where you're familiar with. You get, you get real good at using it at that point. And so then when you are thinking of a new creative ways to use it, you get a lot better at it. Um, other resources like uh, codeacademy.com has a good Python tutorial. That's excellent. Um, things like that. And then you have your JSON uh, resource as well. So that's all I have for y'all. Um, just uh, if, uh, please fill out the uh, evaluation. That's how we get better. Um, and if you, if you do, you can get a, hopefully you get a, there's your Cisco Live t-shirt. So make sure to do that with the app. Um, 
but there, were there any questions about any, anything we covered here? Okay, thank you all for coming.